One of the things I used to struggle with the most when I started with video editing was with color grading. Being a professional photographer helps because you are used to edit images and colors, but video editing works a little bit different and it's very easy to get the tones wrong and more you are trying to give a professional film look to your image. So today I will show you how I edit this intro sequence from one of my previous videos and how I achieve a film look in just one click. And the best part is that you will have so many film looks to choose from and they are all fully customizable. The plugin I'm going to be talking about today, it works with Final Cut Pro, with Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, and there is even a phone app. So you're going to be able to use it regardless of what you use to edit. I personally use Final Cut Pro, but it's going to be the same for any software you may use. The plugin itself is called The Hanser, and this video is not sponsored at all by them. I just use this plugin a lot for my videos, and I just wanted to show you in this tutorial because it's very good for beginners if you want to achieve the film look. And you can also be very thorough with your edits and get more professional with it because it has so many features. But they were nice enough to give me a discount you can use, and I'm going to link below, to get a 10% discount from everything you get from the Hanser. However, this video is sponsored by Audio, and I'm going to tell you more about them later, and you will understand why when I'm going to show you the final sequence. So let's go to it now to Final Cut Pro, and here you can see I already have all the clips I selected for my intro. And all the plugins, most of them at least, work the same way. You're going to have to apply first the color corrections, the basics, and then you apply the plugin. So this is what we're going to do. So if you go here, you're going to see that I already color corrected everything. You see, I already played with the exposure, the mid-tones that I didn't touch, and shadows neither. But then you can play with saturation and color. We're not going to touch that today because I want to show you how easy it is with this plugin to do everything professionally. So one way to do it is in effect, when you install it, is drag it to your footage right away. And then you would copy this clip into the others. So it's super easy. But how I like to do it is with an adjustment layer because I can cut it later and modify clips individually. And now what I'm gonna do is apply the Hanser Pro so everything is gonna get modified. You see here, by default is selected one and added grain, but I don't like this. I'm gonna customize it. I'm gonna select this frame because I can see my face, the skin tones, and I can see perfectly how it's gonna look. So I recommend you to do this as well. Now we're gonna go to the plugin, the Hanser Pro, and you have so many options and it's very overwhelming. So don't worry because what I'm gonna do is focus on beginners. I'm gonna teach you what matters and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to achieve a professional film look in one click, literally. <laughs> but then I'm gonna show you a few more things for you to see how professional you can be as well, because it has so many sliders. It's fine, you don't need to learn it, because if you get this plugin, it comes with an incredible manual, very easy to understand, and it tells you everything about it. So it's very easy to learn, and it's also very intuitive. You may not even need it. So we're gonna go here. So by default, the source is Rec. 7 or 9, and this one is the one I use, but you shoot in log, you're gonna have to put log, and then you can download the profile of your camera. You can do that as well with this. But I'm not going to do it that way because I don't use lock for now. So let's go here. And you can see you can already play with the exposure here. Or you can play with the temperature as well. Warmer or colder. You can go warm and it actually looks good warmer. So I'm going to leave it like that. And a little bit more exposure. Then if you go down, this is the very fun part. You have all the film emulations here. And you have all of this. So it's insane because you have so many to choose from. I really like this one as well. You can see this is the before and this is the after. And in one click, you already have everything perfectly edited. So this one is super nice, but I'm gonna show you a few more examples for you to see. You can choose as well black and white and who doesn't love black and white? You have Ilford, it's one of my favorites. And you have this one already edited in black and white every single clip. You don't have to touch anything about color grading in Final Cut Pro. You don't have to know anything about it. I mean, I recommend you to learn it, but as you can see, you're gonna be able to achieve a lot as a beginner, and then you can learn and be more professional. So I'm gonna choose this one as well to show you. The one I use for my other video, I'm gonna show you how it looks, is this one, Kodak Kodachrome 64 Experimental. And I like this one because this film stock is characteristic for the red and purple tones in the shadows. I really, really love this film stock emulation and it's perfect. So this is the before and in one click you have this. 
I love it. I'm gonna show you one more I really like, and it's this one, Fuji Color Print Industrial 100. It gives these moody tones, and if you follow my channel, you know that moody is my favorite word for color grading and for photography style, because it's my style and I love it. And it's applied already to everything, to all the sequence. So it's incredibly easy. To change a little bit, I'm gonna edit it with another color grade because you already have the other intro I show you. So I'm gonna choose another one so I give you another example. I'm gonna select Fuji Color Pro 400, this one. This one is very subtle, but I really like it. And I'm gonna show you here, you have Film Developer and you can play with the contrast, with the gamma, color separation, color boost. And here is a little bit better. It's more washed out and it looks a bit more like film. And now we're gonna go down you have film compression, it's very intuitive, but I'm not gonna touch this now. Expand to play with the black point, the white point, exactly like film. And then you have here print. These are profiles. So I always choose linear, but I'm gonna show you how creative you can get with the other profiles. So you can press here Fuji Film 3513. It's completely different, and I actually love it because of the blue tones and it's super cool. So you can get incredibly creative with this. Then another one is this one. It's a bit darker, and this one with glossy paper. So I'm gonna leave it in linear for today. And then you can correct again, exposure, the tones, color density, saturation. So you can play a lot with this. Then you have more options here to play with each color. So this is incredibly accurate if you wanna play with it, but you don't need to, you are a beginner. And this is film grain. I think Personally, you have to add a little bit of grain because it's more realistic. If you do like a nostalgic scene and you apply a film emulation, if you don't add grain, it's gonna look a bit digital still. So I would add a little bit because it's a very nice touch. And I'm gonna show you now how. If you remove it, look at the image. This is very soft and it's very good if you want to achieve this. It's totally fine. But you want to achieve the film look, the real one, you apply it and it looks way better and realistic. But I'm gonna remove a little bit. You have the size here. It's very obvious, it's the size of the grain. I'm gonna remove it in one. And then I'm gonna reduce the amount because I don't like too much either. Maybe three or even four. I'm gonna leave it in four. You can see it already and it's very subtle. Then you have the film resolution. This is just the resolution of the grain. Then shadows, mid-tones, add highlights. You can play with the grain in each section of the photo. Halation. This is another plugin that comes with the Hanser Pro. And it's these halos film used to create around highlights, but I don't use it. I personally don't use it, but there is another plugin I love, which is Bloom Effect. And the Bloom Effect is what you can create with mist filters. I don't know if you know about them. I do have videos about this on my channel and I love them because it softens the highlights and it makes everything a bit softer in general, which is very cool and looks very cinematic. But you don't have a filter like that. You can fake it with this. And I'm gonna show you how. It's very easy. You just have to go here to Bloom and you press here, enable. This is the before and the after. It softens the image. So this is very good if you don't have that kind of filter. You can fake it in post-production. So I'm gonna remove it for today. And this is something you really have to use. I mean, you don't need to, but I love to use it, which is the vignette. You have to press here in enable and you can play with the exposure. So I'm gonna darken the exposure a lot and you can see it's too much, but that's fine because in size, you can make it bigger, the center. And then the feather as well. This is the before and this is the after. I think it looks good because you can put more attention into the subject. And it's gonna apply it in all the scenes as well, as you can see. So it gives a very, a very nostalgic look and I love it. And then here you have more options I'm not gonna show you today because otherwise this video would be incredibly long. But then what I want to show you is the output. This is incredibly important. Output total impact, this is the opacity. Because maybe you like the effect a lot, but it's like, mm, I don't want to touch anything, but I don't want all the effect 100% there. I want to soften it a little bit. So this is the opacity. So you go lower, you see, nothing is there. And then you apply it a bit more or 100%. I'm gonna leave it in 80 or so. So it's a bit more subtle. This is the before and this is the after. And then here as well, you have something which you may love. You can generate LUTs. You can create your own LUTs to sell them or actually for yourself. To create them, if you like some colors you achieve with your settings, you can save them later. And I think this is very good. 
So if you do it like me in an adjustment layer, the only thing you have to do to modify particular clips is to cut it. I'm gonna cut, for example, this part. So as you can see, this is the same tone as the other clips, but then if I want to change something in particular, I can do it as well, and it doesn't affect the rest. So I'm gonna remove this because I'm not gonna do it today, but this is to show you how you can customize every single clip. It's very easy to do it. So we didn't finish yet. I still had to tell you how to add a personal touch and how to make it better, the whole sequence, and how to add one of the most important parts, if not the most important. But I wanted to give you a little tip about the Hanser Pro. Plugins are expensive. We all know that I spend literally hundreds in other plugins and graphics you see in this YouTube channel. The good part is that the Hanser divided everything. My advice is if you don't need all the features and you just want the film emulations, which is I think the best part of it, you can take just the film emulations. So this is a little tip if you want to save money. And remember that with the code LAURABC through the link below, you're gonna have an extra 10. So we're gonna go now for these personal touch I like to add in my videos and you may like as well, it's an idea for you which is this one. Once you have all the color grading done, I like to add a frame into it. So these ones are from a platform I'm gonna link below if you want to take a look. There is two I like to add. One is this one, the letterbox bars. You're gonna see it here, the before and the after. It adds these panoramic bars, which I love because it looks more cinematic, but I like to add, I'm gonna remove it, this one here is this one and this is a beautiful sequence and it's so nice with that frame or add another kind of frame this is up to you and now you may have noticed that there is something incredibly important that is missing and that's music if you choose the wrong music or the music you choose doesn't match the mood of the scene it doesn't matter how beautiful the sequence is you already screw up the whole project <laughs> So please take time to sing the right music. And also you may know already that you need a license-free music platform because otherwise you're gonna get demonetized in social media and if you work with clients, you're gonna have problems. So please be careful with the music you choose for your projects. So I use a few platforms, but one of my favorite ones is audio. I really like cinematic music and audio works straight away with music artists. International artists, international bands, they work with brands like Toyota, Adidas, Netflix. The music there is incredible and I spend a lot of time listening to music because for me it's incredibly important for my creative process. And you're gonna see the music I selected for this one in a bit. So right now, audio is offering a 70% off and I don't know when it's gonna end this offer in the annual subscription, which is 59 dollars for the whole year rather than 199 but there is another one for the lifetime subscription you pay once and that's it you just have to go through the link below and use the code laurabc10 the offer is gonna finish on the 9th of june and thank you so much audio for sponsoring this video because i love the music they offer so this is the final sequence with the music I think you can agree with me that music is everything for video and it's a huge part of the creative process. I love spending hours trying to match the music with the clips I recorded. And for this sequence, the cinematic music I added, I think is perfect. So then you can do the same with your videos. And an extra tip you may have heard already is to edit with the rhythm of the music. But don't overdo it because otherwise the audience is gonna expect all the time 
the change of the clips. So don't overdo it, but do it a little bit because it looks more professional and it makes a difference. Again, I'm gonna put the links below. The discount for the Hanser, you can get any product for the Hanser with a 10% off, and they have also film emulations for photography. So you may be very interested on this because they look very nice as well. And you have both offers from audio below as well with the discount codes. So go check out the video of the intro I just showed you because I shared with you so many tips to get creative inspiration to take better photos and better videos and I think you're gonna love it and subscribe to my channel if you didn't yet by the way and I will see you very soon big love